Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today, we are working on an exciting project that involves a microwave transformer. Very clickbaity microwave transformer. Seen a lot of videos about these on YouTube. Anyway, turns out um, you can use one to create a spot welder. Now, why do you want a spot welder? Well, the thing is, if you want to make a lithium battery pack, it's kind of mandatory. You don't really want to be soldering these joints here. Probably one of the main reasons is that you have to get that terminal so hot in order to put a blob of solder there that you kind of cook a bit of your battery and shorten its life. You don't want to do that. These things are really expensive. Anyway, so that's the goal. So I built this contraption, which has a lovely looking front panel, I must say. And uh, th this is its back panel, which is also lovely. I've put my little logo there and the date. Well, well we have a, a low voltage transformer and that comes in here and gives us a five volt supply. Uh, it had a little rectifier and a capacitor. And then that came to this DC to DC converter, which we could adjust to five volts. Over here, we have a little capacitive dropper and an opto isolator, which connect directly to the high voltage mains. Now, this is probably not necessary, but I have included it anyway, because what this allows me to do with the Arduino over here is to run this sense wire here. And what this does is it sends out a pulse every time the AC is um, falling across zero, because you really don't want to switch on the power to the microwave transformer when the AC wave is at its peak because then you get this huge voltage spike and inrush current to the transformer. Um, now the reason that's probably not necessary is that this guy here, this solid state relay that I'm using to switch the microwave transformer, this already does um, zero crossing detection. So probably this is all a waste of time. But I didn't want to be in a situation where you push the foot pedal and then the Arduino says all right, well, we want to stay on for 20 milliseconds. Uh, maybe you're in the middle of a cycle and the Arduino says turn on. And then this guy starts waiting. He waits 5 milliseconds till the zero crossing. And then, you know, and then at some point the Arduino says stop. Well, where's this guy? He might run for 10 milliseconds more or less than you wanted because of the time at which you switched him. The whole point of this is the Arduino knows, you know, it just waits a little bit to be in sync with the AC wave cycle. Today, we are rebuilding the power supply. I'll do a bit of magic here. We are in Inkscape. This is my favorite software to use for designing simple circuits because I really like drawing in the, the grid with the snap turned on. It's just so much easier than booting up, you know, Eagle or um, one of the other professional grade things when all I'm going to do is build it on a perf board anyway. I've got like a library of these little components. So I love working with the grid on, but for the purposes of video, I'm going to disable it. And that will help with the compression, I think. And so that you can see where I'm pointing, this little guy here will assist me. <laughs> So you can see over here, we have the high voltage mains, the live and the neutral coming in on that side. And they go straight away to a smaller transformer via a 500 milliamp fuse. So the transformer is drawn sort of off the page here. It's just got fly leads. Uh, and that gives us this nine volt AC over here, which is rectified with a full bridge rectifier. Um, and then that just goes into a five volt regulator, which has a bit of input capacitance and a, a little tantalum capacitor on the output. Here is the little capacitive dropper circuit. You can see that I've put two capacitors in series, which hopefully um, improves their voltage rating somewhat. And the 22 nanofarads plus 22 nanofarads ends up being something like 10 nanofarads. I haven't measured it, but that's what I was aiming for. And the 10 nanofarads coupled with this little 33 kilo ohm resistor here, uh, drive this 
infrared LED inside the 4N28 optocoupler, and that is what gives us the output signal. Um, so we've just got five volts coming in here via a 10K um, resistor. And at this node here, at the top of this little transistor, that's where we get our sensor voltage. Now, I like to keep this little thing lying around because what this does is it tells you the function of all of the pins. Um, because that can be quite difficult to know by reading the data sheet. It's all in there, but it just takes forever to figure out what all the pins are. So doing it this way, I can put my devices on the left and just connect them up like this. And then I know, for instance, that the encoder on, uh, on the first pin is connected to pin three on the Arduino, which is interrupt number one. And it's very important, only pin three can be interrupt number one. You know, the general use pins, but far out, it can be quite a task to figure out where you're gonna put everything. So yeah, this is the general scheme and layout. We've basically just got the foot switch, the seven segment display, the encoder and the AC sense, and everything that is switching, uh, like the encoder pins or the encoder button, although I don't do anything with the encoder button, has a little 200 nanofarad uh, capacitor on it just to smooth the wave. So here is a different view of the exact same thing. Um, I just have the Arduino drawn out, the particular one that I have. Every time I buy a new batch of these, I have to redraw it. And then I just have the same pin mappings laid out so that it's just harder to make mistakes. If you've got this printed out sitting next to you, it's really easy to get it right. We're going to get the kitty chirp. The sound she makes when you wake her up. Hello. Uh, we've just done a bit of 3D printing to get uh, this guy in here held down nice and safe. Uh, I have no idea how I'm going to attach this guy because I don't think I can get him in there. He might just float around, hey? This is the air vent that I ended up going with. Um, a bit of a challenge to fit everything in, actually. It looks really sparse on the front, but around the back you've got all sorts of bits going on. Most of the time was spent painstakingly remodeling the stock components for no good reason whatsoever, but um, it's, uh, it's fun to do. It's nice to like just have YouTube going and, and sit with a pair of calipers and model things because I'm just like that. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you my uh, spot welder in all its glory. Um, I could not for the life of me find a way to mount that, so I've just 3D printed a box with a closed bottom, and I'm just going to literally cable tie that there, and that's where it's going to live. Everything else is sort of mounted down in there, and wow, that was a very dense project. Would have been nice to put some more of it back here but I didn't plan for it. I don't think I really needed this heatsink. It just came with this thing and I don't know, I just installed it. Put some nice rubber wheels on. I have 3D printed a nicer knob that comes in a bit closer to the front panel. Put that there, screw it in, and uh, it'll be complete. Sun power gloss. I really like this. It reminds me of uh, egg yellow. Oh yeah. And without further ado, it's done. I somewhat regret installing the power cord in the front here. It is very convenient to plug that in over the front of the table, especially since I don't intend to have this plugged in, you know, all the time. And this also needs to plug in there that is that is for the foot pedal which um i just bought from my local electronics store ready for a boot up and a test oh <laughs> the machine it is working. Oh, that's pretty good. Uh.
Whoa. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad it worked. Oh, wow. <laughs> anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you next time.